Kidney disease and kidney damage can have a number of disastrous effects on your health, including severe metabolic distress, complications in many tissues throughout your body, and an increased risk for premature death. Fortunately, your kidneys are capable of healing even from a very inflamed state. And the good news is that by adjusting your diet, improving your cardiovascular health, and avoiding high-risk behaviors, you can often experience a full recovery. That's why in this video, we'll explain the causes of kidney disease, how it's possible to not just manage, but reverse the inflammation that causes kidney disease, and we'll talk about the exact method to reverse kidney disease using your diet and some small lifestyle changes. And you'll wanna watch this video all the way through because understanding a little bit of science behind kidney disease means that you can heal your kidneys and keep them healthy permanently. So think of your kidneys as a blood filtration system. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're filtering your blood, selectively removing waste products to be eliminated into your urine and then redepositing valuable metabolites into your blood to help you regulate your osmotic balance, your blood pH, and your blood pressure. And guess what that means? That your diet plays a massive role in the short-term and long-term health of both of your kidneys. There are three main categories of risk factors for kidney injury. First, a nutrient-poor diet containing significant amounts of refined products and animal products. Second, other chronic diseases affecting tissues outside of your kidneys. Third, alcohol and drug use over the course of time. We'll touch on each of those in the next few minutes. One of the most common causes for kidney damage is high blood pressure, which can happen for many different reasons. Like we've said before, think of your kidneys as one of your body's natural filtration pumps. They function best at a normal blood pressure. But conditions like atherosclerosis, which is the hardening of blood vessels, coronary artery disease, or high cholesterol that increases the deposition of arterial plaque, all three of these can increase your blood pressure and put an excess strain on sophisticated and highly detailed filtration system called nephrons inside of your kidney. Then over a long time exposed to elevated blood pressure, the capillary blood vessels inside of these millions of microfilters can get damaged. They can get inflamed and they can get hardened, which can then limit your kidney's ability to filter your blood properly. Another way that your kidneys can become damaged is from living with diabetes. This can occur in people living with type 1 diabetes, type 1.5 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, pre-diabetes, and gestational diabetes, all of which can cause frequent hyperglycemia, also known as high blood glucose or high blood sugar. Just like with high blood pressure, if your kidneys are constantly exposed to high blood glucose, they can be damaged over time and dramatically reduce your kidney function. Now let's talk about alcohol. Your kidneys, along with your liver, are responsible for filtering harmful waste products in your blood, which includes ethanol, the compound that we commonly refer to as alcohol. Now your liver is responsible for converting ethanol into acetoacetate and eventually acetate and both of these can be exported into your blood. Your muscles then use acetate as a fuel, and an increasing concentration of acetate in your blood actually lowers the amount of glucose that your liver puts into circulation. This is exactly why, after a night of drinking, you might find that your blood glucose is actually lower in the morning than it is normally. And this may trick you into believing that alcohol is actually helping you manage your blood glucose when in reality, it's merely suspending or suppressing the amount of glucose that's being released into circulation by your liver. It's actually a fascinating process. Now, when it comes to your kidney, most experts agree that an increased risk of kidney damage from alcohol begins to take place if you have more than two drinks per day. And with heavy drinkers, more than four alcoholic drinks per day or 14 alcoholic drinks per week can double your risk for kidney disease. Now, there's also a few more risk factors like excessive drug use or prolonged pharmaceutical medication dependence, but for now, we'll stay focused on these three. There are multiple different types of kidney damage, which can have their own signs and symptoms. We'll explore each of them. First, acute kidney failure. Second, chronic kidney disease. And third, a total renal failure. Let's talk about the difference between these three. The first type of kidney damage is acute kidney failure, sometimes referred to as acute renal failure. Now, acute renal failure 
usually occurs over the course of a few days and happens in tandem with other serious medical conditions. If for any reason your kidneys lose their ability to filter blood, resulting in a lack of filtration that causes electrolytes, fluids, and waste products to accumulate in your blood rapidly, this can become an emergency situation. This can damage all tissues and is in a situation that must be addressed immediately with the help of medical professionals. Though it can be hardest to predict, acute kidney failure can be fatal if left unattended. So it's important to immediately visit a doctor if you experience any of the following symptoms, which include chest pain or pressure, confusion, decreased urine output, fatigue, fluid retention causing swelling in your legs, ankles, or your feet, an irregular heartbeat, nausea, shortness of breath, seizures or coma in severe cases, and weakness. The good news is that in most cases, acute kidney disease can be treated effectively and patients can experience a full recovery. Chronic kidney disease, also known as CKD or early stage kidney failure, occurs when your kidneys are subject to chronic stressors over time. These stressors include hypertension, high blood glucose, or alcohol and drug abuse. Rather than a sudden buildup of fluids and compounds, chronic kidney disease is caused by the steady wearing down and damage of your kidneys. This consistent damage over time reduces their ability to perform critical functions and progresses from stage one to stage two to stage three to stage four. The symptoms of chronic kidney disease include weight loss, swollen extremities, tiredness, cramps, and urinary difficulties. However, it's also important to note that CKD can onset slowly because your kidneys can still function while the damage is increasing over the course of time. For this reason, it's very important to pay careful attention to your blood work and your health, particularly if you have diabetes or high blood pressure. If caught early enough, it's possible to recover from chronic kidney disease before the symptoms worsen or ultimately cause stage four chronic kidney disease, also known as ESRD or end-stage renal disease. And the most severe form of kidney disease is end-stage renal disease. End-stage renal disease is complete failure of your kidneys, which results from untreated chronic kidney disease. With end-stage renal disease, your kidneys can no longer filter your blood, which can be fatal. End-stage renal disease is commonly treated by dialysis or a kidney transplant. Dialysis is an expensive procedure that is commonly performed in an outpatient clinic. Patients are connected to a dialysis machine which filters your blood because your kidneys can no longer do so. Think of dialysis as a mechanical substitute for failing kidneys. Now, if you have any of the symptoms that we described earlier, you'll work with a nephrologist or a kidney doctor to take both a urine test and some blood test to determine whether or not you're living with any form of kidney damage. Combined with your past medical history and a few additional tests if needed, your doctor can help you determine the exact way to move forward. Now, in cases where kidney damage is acute or minimal, it's possible to treat the complications of the disease with medication until lifestyle changes can be made. However, in the case of severe or end-stage renal disease, only treatment options are dialysis and kidney transplant. Before any treatment for kidney damage, we highly recommend speaking with your trusted healthcare professional. These guidelines are helpful, but your trusted healthcare professional will be the ultimate determinant of exactly what path to follow in your particular situation. The first line of treatment for early stage kidney damage and acute kidney damage is to target the causes. This usually means treating high blood pressure or accompanying high cholesterol with medication as the first line of defense until you're able to use your diet as your primary form of medicine. Think of pharmaceutical medications as a band-aid that buys you time, but doesn't address the underlying cause of vascular inflammation. In order to fully reverse hypertension and high cholesterol, dietary and lifestyle changes are necessary. In the case of more extreme cases of kidney damage, you may require dialysis, which is the routine manual flushing of your kidneys done so by a machine. Unfortunately, dialysis is a treatment with a limited scope of success. Most indications show that patients on a dialysis survive for about five, maybe 10 years longer, or up to 30 years if accompanied by the appropriate lifestyle changes. There is also one last resort for kidney failure, a kidney transplant 
which can be used in tandem with dialysis. A kidney transplant involves finding a suitable donor with similar enough blood and biochemistry to allow for a transplant that your body will accept. The transplant process can be very difficult and complicated with patients sometimes waiting years for a suitable donor. That's why we recommend paying attention to your health and taking action. The most powerful way to improve your kidney health and reverse, not just manage, but reverse the damage caused by years and years of abuse is by eating a plant-based diet. Surprise, surprise. Whether you wanna hear this or not, the truth is that ample scientific research shows that a plant-based diet is an extremely powerful tool that you can use to improve the health of not only your diabetes health, and not only your vasculature, and not only your brain, and not only your liver, but your kidneys as well. There's a common misconception in the world that eating foods that contain potassium, phosphorus, and sodium will damage your kidneys and increase the concentration of these metabolites in your blood. But it's also important to understand that eating potassium-rich foods actually decreases your blood pressure and improves your kidney function. So step one is to increase your intake of foods that are rich in potassium, phosphorus, and sodium, but make sure that you do this in combination with reducing your protein intake and your saturated fat intake at the same time. This combination will help your kidneys become less inflamed, which will increase their ability to filter potassium, phosphorus, and sodium. Now for step two, when it comes to protein, one of the most effective ways to improve your kidney function is to reduce your intake of protein to approximately 0.8 to 1.0 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. The third step is to increase your intake of fiber-rich foods. Fiber is a crucial nutrient that functions to improve the health of your vasculature, microbiome, and kidneys. So aim to eat between 50 and 100 grams of fiber per day to dramatically improve your kidney health. Fortunately, for all of these dietary changes, we recommend a heavily plant-based diet that is high in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. These foods are packed with key nutrients and are light on saturated fat and light on protein. And they include foods like tomatoes, potatoes, avocados, melons, oranges, bananas, nuts, seeds, dates, and cruciferous vegetables. And in addition to adding these key ingredients, we also recommend avoiding the following foods, salt, refined grains, protein from animal sources, red and processed meats, dairy products, and sugar sweetened foods and beverages. It can seem daunting at first, but the results are real, like in the case of Sana, who was able to reverse stage three kidney disease by changing her diet. So now that you have a solid foundation on kidney disease, you can confidently stay on top of your kidney health. The great news here is that there are simple and straightforward steps that you can take to reverse kidney disease using only your diet. And the best part is that those exact same steps aren't just helpful in reversing kidney disease. In fact, they've been proven to help reverse insulin resistance, lower your blood glucose, and help you lose weight to help you live longer and to improve your quality of life. That's why we're so big on teaching these principles as part of the Mastering Diabetes Method, because the science is there and it can do seriously good things for you and your health, whether you're living with kidney disease or not. So if you're looking to improve your kidney and overall health through a low-fat, plant-based, whole food diet, the Mastering Diabetes Coaching Program is here for you. We have a range of programs, from group coaching to private coaching, which can all help you take control of your life. In order to find out which option is best for you, we suggest booking a free discovery call. Simply click the link below and you'll be directed to a page where you can book a time that works for you and speak with a member of the Mastering Diabetes team. And don't forget to push that little like button with your thumb or with your mouth. Subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications by clicking that cute little bell icon. Uh, when you do, you'll be notified of more videos in the future and that'll give you the inside scoop on how to master your diabetes health using your food as medicine. See you in the next video.